Fall Jug Steve, uh, this presentation is for teachers and students alike for leaving certificate uh, honours economics. Um, it'll show you some of the key graphs needed for leaving cert honours paper for economics and also show you tips and how to pick up marks um, in different sections. We've already done another guide that you should refer to for more information on that as well. Um, if you have any questions, you can email Mr. McGarry teaching vids at gmail.com. Okay, so to begin then, uh, we're going to look at um, a few little tips and tricks. So just first of all to say there's a new course coming in 2020 for Leave Insert uh, Economics and includes a research topic where 20% of your final Leave Insert Certificate Economics exam. Um, I have another video uh, link on my website, mrmcgarry.weebly.com, which shows you the link between doing economics and getting higher paid jobs. So that'd be an interesting one for students uh, considering what subjects to do for the Leave Insert. Um, okay, practice diagrams like the one below. So we're going to have uh, three different diagrams on elasticity, another one on market um, equilibrium. And uh, we're going to go through those. I've done graphs and word for you for those. Okay, so it's like the document, it's a type of document that could be downloaded by teachers and used. Um, and uh, yeah, and by students like too. So I'll calculate price elasticity, elasticity of demand. Um, there's a formula for that. It's the percentage change in quantity demanded uh, divided by the percentage change in, in price, PR, short for price, and income elasticity of demand. Um, you've also got elasticity of supply and demand, that's the, the, the diagrams you have below. Um, and you can also add tax and income to get different scenarios for those graphs as well. Um, that'll be for, for, for the presentation. Across the elasticity, just uh, so you have a, some overview of what that's about, um, there's a formula for that. It's the percentage change of quantity of good A divided by the percentage change of the price of good B. So you could have substitutes in cross elasticity where uh, tea could be a, a substitute for coffee. Um, that would be uh, uh, not a very high substitute. Whereas if two plus is here, because in the case, it's a, it's a very easy and high substitute. So people easily switch from Starbucks coffee to Costa coffee as a service. Yeah, but they might not as easily switch from tea to coffee. Some people just love coffee. Um, or tea. And then complementary goods then in cross, in cross elasticity, you've got tea and milk uh, go well together. So when price go up of say milk and price goes up of tea, it impacts on, on one another. Um, and not to a very high extent, that's why I have one minus sign there, but here to a very, uh, to a higher extent, when the price of Android phones or Android apps changes, it has a high impact um, on the quantity of Android apps and, and phones sold. Okay, so that just gives you a little overview of cross elasticity, which is an important concept in the new 2020 um, curriculum online for leaving certain economics. So next market equilibrium, you'll see there's a big diagram at the end um, on that. Uh, find the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. And we'll show you how to find the point on the graph for that at the end. So the impact of demand and supply on the equilibrium um, and price. And then equilibrium on competition um, and you can factor in wages and the quantity of uh, labor and as many workers are out there. Okay, the key is to understand the form of calculating the coefficient of price elasticity, the factors that affect elasticity and also why elasticity is important for businesses when setting up a business, uh, their prices. You use graphs to present the change in demand due to change in price. Um, so for example, there's, there's a concept called, an idea called elastic, and then there's an idea called inelastic uh, demand, and then there's inelastic supply and elastic supply. So when we're talking about inelastic, uh, that's items that people will still buy, even if the price goes up. So cigarettes are an example of that because people so people are addicted to them. So they, they'll, even if price goes up, they'll still keep buying them at around the same quantities. Um, mobile phone operators might be more elastic 
because um, if one mobile uh, service provider like Vodafone increased their price, people will all switch over to, to, to that provider, arguably. So there's a lot more switching uh, happens. So that's where your products are more elastic. People would change providers if the price goes up too much. Always label, this is general tips now, always label it and, and title your, your graphs uh, to pick up easy marks. Um, in the honours level paper in, in Leaving Cert Economics, you can try questions 17, 18, 16 and 15 for practice on these diagrams and graphs. Um, and use the full marking scheme when you're, when you're working on your, on your graphs to see where marks are lost and, and see where, what way the answers work out as well. Um, questions on currency due to come up. So next year, um, I'm predicting that there should be uh, a question on currency. comes up in, in either the short section or the long, long section in, in Leaving Cert Economics, given that it hasn't come up in a while. Um, and it usually comes up every other year. Uh, the impact of of exports, imports, employment, and foreign direct in, in investment, you need to understand the links between those, and uh, that often comes up every year in the Leaving Cert Honours exam. And you need to learn off definitions and try and understand your, your favorite topics first. So focus on getting your favorite topics down first and know the definitions and know those sections really well and be confident that they're the sections you're gonna do. And then uh, fill in around that. In other words, go to the topics that you struggle with more than after that. And NAMA is in the news an awful lot at the moment, so expect something on NAMA to pop up as well, if not this year and the next year. Um, that's the National Assets Management Agency in Ireland. Okay, and it's, yeah, it's likely to pop up an exam. Impacts of minimum wage introduced in Ireland 2016. There'll probably be referrals back to that again. That was a big shift in Ireland where we gave people a minimum uh, wage, um, everyone in the country, in 2016. So a minimum amount of money uh, earned per hour, okay? And <clears throat> the big thing here, as you'll hear me repeat quite a bit, is to practice doing your diagrams. And that's what I'm gonna help you with here today as well. Fantastic tip and resources for helping you with your honors students with their economics uh, diagrams is if you go to Khan Academy, you'll see all different types of, um, and on YouTube, you see all different types of uh, microeconomics uh, diagrams. Okay, revision of how to get percentages in maths and economics. What this is about is I just put together a few paragraphs to help remind students how to get percentages. And you should know this from maths. Um, you should be taught this in maths. Um, but if you're not, uh, and you need a revision over it, you can read that section there to figure out how to, for example, if the price increases from 50 to 58, what's the percentage increase? Because you need to be able to do that when you're working out um, the different formula and then to be able to, uh, from that, then do the graphs. Okay, moving on. You can read that yourself, so I'm for you. So price elasticity of demand is short. PD is usually written as for short. So um, the formula for PD, for price elasticity of demand, is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the quantity change in price. And um, Work out quantity first and put that over the price uh, and divide it to each other. Now, if you want to get TR, total revenue, uh, in other uh, questions, I'm going to ask what the total revenue is. It's just price multiplied by quantity. Okay, so moving on. Uh, the PED, as we said, is price elasticity of demand. So if that's equal to zero or less than one, um, the type of products we're dealing with are inelastic demand uh, type products, cigarettes, petrol, uh, chocolate, etc. cetera. Um, if PED is equal to one, then it's quite inelastic. Consumers uh, need this even if the price changes. And then if the price elasticity of demand is, is more than one, um, it's known as elastic demand. So the quantity of units demand will change significantly with changes to price. Easy for consumers to switch between providers. Uh, for example, if supermarkets increase their prices uh, too much, say Dunn's or Tesco or Lidl, if one of them are too expensive, consumers then will just go and shop in the one that's uh, better value. And again, everything's arguable, obviously. This is just theory and it helps give you an overall uh, picture of what's going on in, in markets around the world and in Ireland. So luxury goods are also elastic and frequent purchases can be elastic as well. So now price discrimination come up in the short questions and the long um, in, Leaving in, in the Leaving Cert Honours paper. So it's good to have an idea what price discrimination is. And it's when you charge different prices to different groups of people. You see it's come up in business studies too. Students pay 30 euro a month uh, for train fares in Ireland, whereas most uh, adults pay 50 euro a month, approximately. 
Students are said then to be elastic as they won't pay more uh, than 30 a month, whereas you could increase the price uh, for adults. We were, the government was able to increase that to 50 and they'll still pay it because they need to train. Um, so yeah, so students are said to be elastic then in that they would change um, to a different uh, form of uh, transport or just not just, you know, uh, strike, etc. if they had to pay more than 30 because obviously they've less funds available to them, whereas adults then are willing to pay more so you can get away with um, charging, uh, increasing price there more easily without them all shifting to something else. Okay, so tax then is another element that you can add into these uh, price uh, elasticity of demand and, and supply as well. So if demand is priced in elastic, then a higher tax will lead to higher prices for consumers. So if you tax uh, tobacco um, uh, with a higher tax, um, often student or often often uh, consumers will continue to buy even with the higher price. If demand is price, if demand is price elastic, firms will face bigger burden, and consumers will have to uh, have to will have a lower tax burden. Okay, so depending on what type of product. Depending on what type of product it is, you can have products that are, are, are price inelastic for tax, and then you can have products that are price uh, elastic for tax. So if they're elastic for tax, it means if you increase the tax by uh, much, you'll have people switching and there being big problems. Um, but if you if the tax isn't, if the, if the price is uh, inelastic, it means if the price you can get away with increasing the price by a little bit and you won't have as big a shift in uh, demand for those products. Okay, again, all this to be explained in further detail in class, so if you have questions, um, etc., cetera, um, go through this orally as well as, as here, here, here on the video. Okay, elastic demand then. So here's the first of our diagrams. And we've spoken now already about elastic demand. So the change to price gives only a big change to demand. So you can see a small uh, change to the price, 50 cent to 60 cent, has led to a big change in the quantity demanded. So from, uh, it was 100 being demanded and now there's only 50 uh, of the products being demanded in this scenario, okay? So uh, always label your diagrams. So whatever the title is first you put down there, then your price, your quantity, um, your euro symbol, because these are in euro, these are 0 0.60, 0 0.50, these are 50 and 100, and quantity um, in units, yeah. Okay, so to explain this in further detail then, if you increase the price, the elastic uh, goods are seen above, the quantity goes down as the consumers will shop elsewhere. So if you increase the price of elastic goods, so that's shown that there with the red arrow, I put the red arrow in there just to show an increase of from 0.50 to 0.6 years. So that's going up by 0.10. Okay. So say so I'm saying there, if you increase the price of elastic goods by such and such, consumers are going to shop somewhere else. Okay. So you haven't specified an exact product here. So this is generally speaking. So percentage change in quantity demanded. Um, to get that, remember we showed you the, the formula first of all for PED, and the, the formula for PED was the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. So you have to work out the percentage change in quantity demanded first, then uh, work out the percentage change in price, and then divide them into each other. There you go, PED, and that's the formula there. Okay, so to work out the first part of that formula, you need to get the percentage change in the quantity demanded. There's the quantity demanded down there, demand curve, quantity demanded. Okay, so you've got uh, minus 50, um, so it's gone down by 50, right? So that's the red arrow there, gone down by 50, and the original and it was originally at 100, so you go minus 50 over the original uh, quantity of 100, and then you multiply that over 100 over one, that'll give percentage, so you're left with a percentage of minus 50%. And to work out the price, uh, the percentage change in price, you go uh, 0.10, divide that by 0.50, so that's, uh, there and there, okay, so because it went up plus 0.10, price went up by 0.10, you divide it by uh, 
0.50 because that was the original price, okay? And I multiply by 101 to get a percentage, that's 20% so of demand. And that's 50% divided by 20%, which gives you minus 2.5, which is more than one and is elastic. And we had the formula at the top saying, if it's more than one, less than one, equal to one, what is it? So if it's this one is 2.5, so it's more than one, so it's elastic for price elasticity of demand. Okay, so the uh, tricky bit here is it ends up with a minus sign, so you have to just ignore that, automatically just convert it into a, a plus sign. Um, drop the minus value in price elasticity of demand because you use the absolute value. So the price elasticity of demand is always uh, negative, so you need to then change it into a, into a positive. Okay, so look, no matter what uh, PD you use, you're gonna end up with minus something. Okay, so you forget about the minus in front of it, you leave it as a plus, and therefore 2.5 is greater than one, and so therefore this type of product that we're, we're looking at here in this diagram is elastic, which again means that if there's a small increase in price or decrease, it could be, there's gonna be a massive impact on demand like there is here, a huge drop in demand, or could make a huge hike in demand, yeah? Okay, so, Hopefully that was helpful. So next um, section here, I put together just a few sums in more detail on how to work out uh, the formula for price elasticity of demand. And you could, if you want, you can do a graph based on that information and see can you get similar to what I've done up above for practice and as an action. Okay, so moving on. So inelastic demand example then. So I put this together um, and it shows when you have a change in price, right? So it goes from 10 uh, euro to 14 euro. Um, it only gives us, you only get a small change in, in consumers demand for whatever product it might be. Okay, so it's gone from 88 because you've increased by four euro uh, rather than 88 uh, units of a of the product being demanded. Now only 80 units are being demanded. So there's been a, a decrease of 10% in the quantity and it is increased by four here um, in, on the price, okay? So if you increase the price of elasticity go of goods as seen above, the quantity goes down, but um, not by much. So the percentage change in the quantity demanded is 10%. That's already worked out there for you. Okay, that's how you work it out. And then the percentage change in price, um, what you need to do there is you're looking at dividing your uh, figures into each other. So you need to divide into the 40 there. Um, you're getting 40%, okay? So you're getting 40% for this uh, price increase here from 10 to four, okay? And that's leaving you then with um, a price elasticity of demand. You need to divide 10% into 40%. That gives you minus 0.25. Okay, and again, just automatically convert that to a plus. And we know 0.25 is less than the number one. So therefore, this product scenario here is inelastic in that when you increase the price by uh, a certain amount, the quantity demanded only drops by a little bit, um, whereas in Alaska it drops by an awful lot. Okay, so drop the minus value in prices because yeah, okay, so that's a repeat of what we had in the last one. Okay, right, so moving on. Right, so price elasticity of supply formula, if the percentage change, well, we've done that already, so I'm gonna try that again. So the first step is to work out the percentages unless already worked out, and I've showed you how to work out percentages and maths in an earlier section there um, in, in this document. So uh, price elasticity of supply um, is the same idea, only uh, supply is obviously the opposite uh, side of the coin to demand, um, so your, your curve is gonna go in the opposite direction, but a lot of the formula and maths you only have to really uh, change very little because it's, it's very similar to, to, to your uh, price elasticity of demand. Um, so you're gonna have elastic supply and then you're gonna have an inelastic supply. 
and the, the, the formulas and the way they're worked out and put on the diagram are going to be very similar. So there's no point doing uh, two full ones on those for you because they're very simple ones and how to do the, 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 the price elasticity of demand. Okay, so price elasticity, when it's less than one and it's elastic, so it's similar to uh, when we're talking about demand, and this is when it's greater than one. Um, now, what changes here is the example. So um, supply can be inelastic when there's low stock or when the factory is at full capacity. Yeah, um, grapes only get harvest uh, once a year. Um, okay, and then you've also got um, elastic demand or sorry, elastic supply. So the example of that would be plastic or taxi drivers, or if online uh, competition, in other words, elastic means they can switch suppliers a lot easier. Inelastic, not easy to, not as easy to, to change supply and, and, and stocks. Okay, use the same method for elastic and inelastic demand. The S curve will be pointing the same as the example given below. However, and here's the example below, that's what it looks like there, okay. And there's your two demand curves, the blue and the black. Whereas that red one, if I let it in red to show you, that's the supply curve. Okay, the supply curve will be pointing uh, same as below. However, the example below is more complex than one sim It's not just simply uh, an inelastic supply curve or an elastic supply curve. What I've done is I've put in two demand curves with a supply curve um, to make it more difficult. Okay, so. However, the exact, um, okay, I've added two demand curves. Okay, so Matt's uh, workings are similar. Um, right, so where was I? I did up this in elastic supply uh, curve for you. It's a bit more complicated than the other two. The reason I didn't do the other two, uh, elastic supply and uh, in elastic supply simple curves, is because they're very similar to the in elastic and elastic curves to demand when you turn your, um, your curve in a different direction for, for your supply curve. The supply curve looks like this one here, the red one, it's in that direction, whereas the demand curves are in that direction, okay? So uh, this one, to explain this one, which is a bit more complicated, it's saying that uh, when the supply is inelastic, it means that an increase in demand um, will cause a large price rise, as you can see in the diagram. So when uh, demand is increased, there's a demand curves there, one or two, and yeah, quantity uh, in units demanded going, uh, that's uh, quantity one is quantity two. So as the price rises, the demand only rises a little bit. Um, whereas if, you're, if you had a, um, an elastic supply uh, diagram, the same type, um, see that line there, that the supply curve line, that's going to flatten out a bit, okay? In that type of in that type of graph, and in that scenario, in an elastic supply uh, uh, graph and, and, and curve, what you're going to have there is an increase in demand will cause only a small uh, rise in the price. But what will happen is the demand will be a lot bigger because obviously, if that uh, supply line is a lot flatter, you're going to have uh, scope here for a lot bigger um, increase and in decrease in quantity. Okay, if there's a price, so that's the whole point of elastic. Remember, if if you increase the price by uh, even a small amount, you can get a huge uh, increase or decrease in the dem demand, uh, the quantity demanded. Whereas in elastic is, if you have a, a large price, uh, you might still only have a small increase or decrease in 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 your quantity demanded. Okay, so that's that. Um, last but not least, we have uh, a significant diagram here, one that pops up quite regularly in Leaving Cert Honours um, Economics, and it's called Market Equilibrium, and it's going to look like this. So it's a different type of diagram. Um, so as you can see, you have a supply curve, and it's going in a curved direction out from the price at which um, apples are going to be supplied. So they won't be supplied until they're about 0.5, that'll be about, so about, about 50 cent before you start getting supplied. And um, we put a max quantity just for this diagram of five. We put a max price here 
uh, say five euro per kilogram of apples. Okay, and then here you've got your demand curve. So you draw your supply curve first, okay, from the price at which producers or suppliers are gonna supply apples, okay, which is down there at 0.5. And then you wanna finish up at the top price there. Um, so you simply go from there to there in a curve fashion. And then you also want to um, intersect your demand curve. So your demand curve, you can start at the top price here and work your way around down to approximately the last price here. But the more likely scenario for demand is if the price is that high, think about it, if the price is gonna be five euro for a, a kilogram of apples, and the demand probably isn't gonna to go to the full five. So you can draw your demand line to around the four because as price increases, as we all know with apples or anything else, um, or most other things uh, for normal products, the, the quantity demand is gonna decrease. Okay, so the whole idea here is to find the equilibrium point, which is that one there, and read off the price in euros per kilogram, and then the quantity in thousands of units. So that looks like about 2.2, um, 2,200 um, units. Oh yeah, I have it there. 2,100 units is what, what I have it down as. Okay, so, so it's not gonna be exact or, or exact because obviously you need graph paper to get it boxed off and count out the amount of boxes for it to get the exact amount here and here, but as an approximate uh, amount, that's perfect there. Okay, so, so to explain then that below um, important diagram, um, the quantity of apples on the graph versus the overall demand price, uh, or demand, sorry, for apples. We could be talking quantity demanded and supplied in the market for apples in a town, or it could be for just one supplier or producer, it could be for a market or a global market. So we could be talking about supply and demand for our own town. So you're just trying to supply your, your town um, for, uh, uh, with apples, and you're able to see what's the demand in that town for, for apples. Okay, so it could be just that, or it could be anything. It doesn't matter, you can apply it to loads of different things. So step one, anyway, to make this diagram is to add the demand curve at a max price here of five. So at five, the demand is going to probably be uh, no more than, say, 4,000 quality apples uh, supplied. So you can judge that approximately on the diagram, okay, where the demand line should start and end. So I showed you that already. So that was down here. Here's the demand line. We'll say uh, there's the, the price uh, per kilogram at which demand at five euro per kilogram, and we're saying 5,000 is the max, your graph's gonna be going from there to, to, to there, okay? Because there's the number, there are the numbers we come up with and provide it. Um, but you, I'm saying you could stop a little bit earlier because at 4,000, at five euro per kilogram, you probably wouldn't be able to sell 5,000 apples at that price because the price is very expensive at that. So your curve could be ending in around the 4,000. Okay, so that's what that point is about up there. Okay, so um, that's that one. So number three then, step two then, is to start the supply curve, say 0 0.50 cent per kilogram, and add a thousand quantity on the, on the diagram as producer not willing to supply. Number two is to start the supply curve at say 50 cent per kilogram for apples, and uh, if you see the diagram below, I'll show you again, it's a thousand quantity on, on the diagram. As producer not willing to supply, uh, kilograms of apples for less than, than 50 cent per kilogram. So that's why we're gonna start the diagram down here for, in other words, supply curve. Suppliers aren't gonna start supplying until we're at 0.5 here, which is 50 cent. So start the curve there and work way up to the max uh, price and quantity. Okay, so you're trying to end it up around, around the five or four here and the five and four here, or the five here, yeah. Right, so um, as I was saying, the suppliers are going to start the supply curve. You're not going to start supplying apples for less than 0.5. So you start at 0.5, work your way up to 5 here, work the graph from 5 here to you can go all the way to 5 there if you want to. Yeah? Okay, so next point. So that's step two. Okay, 
step uh, number four then. Next, add the different scenarios to read from the graph. Okay, so have a think about what would happen to uh, quantity supplied and demand at particular prices. Okay, so at one euro per kilogram, you're gonna have a shortage of 3,000 apples. Because if you look down here, if you go to one euro, and you come across from one euro is the price per kilogram of apples. You come down here, um, the quantity is gonna be supplied that amount is going to be 1,000 because we're reading off the supply curve. And then if you go along and hit the next curve, the demand curve, it's going to be, there's going to be 4,000 demanded, 4,000 apples demanded, 1,000 supplied, take 4,000 from 1,000, that gives you 3,000. So there's a shortage of 3,000 apples, obviously, because there's more being demanded, way more being demanded than there is being supplied. Okay, at that price, and that's the price of one euro. So let's see what happens when we increase the price to three euro, or when we're at the equilibrium price, which is about two point, uh, have it written there, 2.3. And that's the quantity you get. That's one of the most important figures you're looking for. That's the equilibrium quantity of 2,100, but we'll deal with that again. Okay, so, um, so that's at one euro kilogram, there's a shortage of 3,000 apples. Price would have to go up because you have a shortage of apples and quantity then would have to go up too. So the following week then, uh, the scenario might be that apples had to go up by three euro. And when we read off the graph in the same way, we'll see the impact that has on supply and demand. So if you look there at three euro, and again, I've worked it out for one euro here and three euro same as above. So at three euro, uh, the quantity supply is going to be 2,500 uh, units. So look at three euro, come across to the supply curve, come down, looks like, yeah, that green dotted dashed line, but 2,500 units looks like around there. Okay. And then um, the quantity demanded, when you go across there, and the pink line there is the demand curve. I come down from that you're talking about 1,500 units. Take those away from each other and you've got a surplus. And that's the surplus area there. See with the black arrow there, I've said uh, short, black, sorry, up here, surplus of supplies. You've got this little triangular area here. That's a surplus that we were just dealing with uh, at three euro. Whereas at one euro, this whole big triangle here, uh, area here is where you'll have a shortage. Um, okay. So that's at one use, there's different scenarios, at three euro, at one euro. Um, so surplus, uh, if you sell um, at apples at three euro, you're gonna get a, a shortage if you sell apples at one euro. So neither is a great scenario. So ideally what you wanna be selling apples at is, is at their equilibrium price and equilibrium um, quantity. So how do we find that out? Well, it's where the two lines intersect, okay? So all we do is we go to where the two lines intersect and read off what the P is, it's 2.3. What's the quantity? It's 2.1, it looks like around that. Okay, so that's what we've said there. The equilibrium price is 2.15 where the curves intersect. The equilibrium quantity is 2,100 units, approximately. The equilibrium price equals 2.3 approximately, um, without graph paper put in there, just as a note, because uh, if you do it on graph paper, it might be a little bit, either side of it, because obviously it's 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 near impossible to get it 100% uh, accurate, unless you have little boxes and you're counting along, little boxes on the bottom and along the side, as you'll know yourselves from doing graphs and other subjects. Okay, but I hope that's a fair representation of how to do uh, market, market equilibrium. Um, and we also looked at elasticity of demand, um, two graphs on that, elasticity of demand, inelastic and elastic dem demand, and then we did a graph on inelastic uh, supply. We did a more complicated one, which added two demand curves to it. Um, we didn't do the inelastic uh, simple supply graph or the elastic uh, price elasticity of supply graph either, uh, because they're very similar, we said, to the uh, demand um, price elasticity. Hope that was helpful. Um, if your parents want to drop me an email, 
for grind and economics, French, accountancy, business, uh, French. And my email is Mr. McGarry teaching vids at gmail.com. My website is Mr. McGarry weebly.com where you'll find this handout this word file upload as one of the one of the first files uh, under economics okay slant